I now call to order the new Carlisle City Council meeting, May 20th, 2019, at 7 p.m. Mrs. Verner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. Fantastic. You don't mind standing for our invocation by Pastor Frank James. <laughs> Pastor. I invite you to pray with me. Living God, may your glory fill all the earth, even as it does, and we affirm that tonight, and we offer you our praise. Let us think about why we are here this evening. Let us uh, also think about what we are to be about in the business we conduct this evening. Let us be reminded that as council people and elected officials, we are called upon to keep as our primary and only purpose to serve the interests of the community and the people who have entrusted the oversight and management of the city of New Carlisle in our hands. Grant these mercies, we pray. For thy great name's sake, we ask it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Did the pledge tonight flag the back. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Action on the minutes. So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Shammy. Mr. Eddie. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Minutes accepted 6-0. Fantastic. Going to communications, we have two proclamations tonight. One for Poppy Day for the American Legion uh, Auxiliary Unit 286, if you don't mind coming forward. So each year uh, we do a proclamation for the uh, auxiliary unit for Poppy uh, Day. It's a proclamation I will read it for you. Uh, whereas in America, maintain freedom, preserved and protected willingly and freely by citizen soldiers. And whereas millions who have answered the call to arms have died on the field of battle. And whereas the nation must remember the price of war and the death of those who have died in the world. And whereas the red poppy has been designated as a symbol of sacrifice, of the sacrifice of lives in all wars, and whereas the American Legion Auxiliary Unit 286 of New Carlisle has pledged to remind America annually of this debt through the, dis dis through the distribution of the memorial flower. Now therefore, I, Mr. Reynolds, Mayor of New Carlisle, do hereby proclaim Friday, May 24th, 2019, as Coffee Day in New Carlisle, Coffee Day in New Carlisle, and ask that all citizens pay tribute to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the name of freedom by wearing Memorial Day poppy on Memorial Day, May 27th, 2019. Signed. And we have our last one. This is for the uh, Cub Scout TAC 220. They helped, and you guys don't mind coming up, they helped clean up the Smith Park on uh, Earth Day. They went out, they climbed in ditches and everything else on the bike trail. They did a fabulous job. These gentlemen did, especially with this piece right here. These three were way down in there. So, uh, proclamation recognizing Cub Scout TAC 220, whereas the Boy Scouts of America of instilling values in youth since its founding in 1910. And whereas this national youth movement has made serving others its value-based program in its mission. And whereas Cub Scout Pack 220 is committed to helping citizens in New Carlisle by providing support to the community, friendship to those who join, and leadership to its ranks. And whereas Cub Scout Pack 220 spent Saturday afternoon cleaning the New Carlisle bike path and Smith Park for all citizens to enjoy. Now therefore, I Ethan Reynolds, Mayor of New Carlisle, we hereby recognize May 20th, 2019, as Cub Scout Appreciation Day. So thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. Thank you so much to the Cub Scouts and uh, for those who have also served in our military. Thank you. Moving.
Yeah. <laughs> uh, moving on, City Manager Report. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, uh, Mayor Reynolds, members of Council, members of the public. would like to share with you the City Manager's Report. We'll start, our, start off with our finance uh, discussion with our finance director, Ms. Debbie Watson. Good evening, Council and residents. Um, our April total revenue was $309,428.73. Our April total expenses was $583,048.14. You notice that's a little high, but that does include the purchase of the new building, so um, that's why it's high. Our year-to-date revenue is $1,639,557.86, and our total expenses for the year is $1,574,991.15. Anybody have any questions? Council, any questions for our city finance director? Hearing none, thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Watson. And moving on with the city manager report, our service report with our service director, Mr. Howard Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, tonight I'd like to update with the service departments. Street department has completed the initial pothole, pothole repair schedule out on the main streets. Uh, we are touching up some alleys, uh, and then we will move on to some uh, major repairs, such as those ones like where trash trucks are created ruts, uh, water main break holes, We'll be getting on those. Uh, water main break asphalt repairs uh, all again to happen after pool operations are complete. Hopefully we're completed with them by this Friday. Pool upgrades, they are moving along. Um, we, are, we were a little behind. I still think we're gonna be completed by opening day. Uh, revamping these locker rooms turned into being a little bit more than what we thought, but nothing you know uh, out of the ordinary, trying to work with the floor people, the wall people, the plumbing, which was us, and stuff like that. But um, some of those are new partitions, uh, the new flooring surface, the um, new toilets, urinals, sinks, the whole nine yards. It's going to basically be brand new uh, inside the locker rooms. We also have installed this past week the six new underwater pool lights. Those are all LED. We've also replaced all but two so far and the main pole in the middle of the whole grounds of LED lighting. So it should say, uh, save us a ton in electric even during those three months when those run, actually the three on the pole run 24 seven or just at night through the whole year. So that will save us a lot. Uh, moving on to 2018, 2019, various road projects, Gilwood Drive reconstruction, 300 block of Gilwood Drive will be reconstructed this year. We are waiting on the commissioners to approve the contract and then um, TC Holzen was the low bidder and I think they're just waiting on some completion of paperwork through the county. Um, once he is done with that, then um, we'll be moving along. Street resurfacing project, Hemlock, Butternut and Bittersweet will be resurfaced. Bids were received and in our cost, uh, a bid opening uh, was $45,420.66. Uh, you do have an ordinance in front of you tonight as an emergency. Uh, for approval, um, and then with uh, approval of the additional gas tax on the last report, street repairs, hopefully we can see a bump in 2020. 2019 wastewater plant influent building upgrade project. Uh, initial pump has arrived and is running on hand. We are waiting on a certain part to allow it to run in auto. And then the Ohio EPA has approved our permit to install for the project. Our plans for this project are out for bid, and the bid opening date is set for 5.30 uh, at the firehouse at 10.30 in the morning. Um, traffic signal upgrade project, choice one is completed, what they call final tracings, which is the final set of plans before bidding. Uh, those are sent to ODOT, and we should be going out for bid this fall for a spring construction um, date. And that is all I have tonight. I can entertain any questions on the report or anything outside of the report. Council, any questions for Mr. Kitko? Mr. Lowry. Uh, Mr. Kitko, thank you for the report, and also thank you to you and all the, the guys that are down there working on the pool, <coughs> putting that uh, together, it's starting to look really good. I don't know if I should ask you this or Mr. Bridge. On the, uh, on the shelter house itself, I was just wondering, I know we at the beginning of the year when we started doing the budget uh, for new tables and chairs in here, is that still in the works? I don't know which one of you two would answer that. I know there's multiple items under the capital improvement for the shelter house, um, but I'm not s sure on what specifics we need. We do need to get some more tables, but I don't know um, outside of that what else. What was your question? I'm sorry. Just when I, I know we had originally talked about getting, uh, I think, more chairs, new chairs that are a little bit cleaned up, 
uh, when, when, or if, if that was still on the table. I, th I thought. Oh, it's it on the table. Yeah, it's it's kind of a low priority right now. I'm not saying it's not a no, high priority, I, yeah. but with the the city building coming in and then the other stuff, it is definitely on the radar to do. Uh, after we get past these first design reviews for the new building and get some big projects underway, we'll probably take a look at that. Yeah, that's. I was just wanting to know yeah. if it's still sitting out there. Yeah, so that was still. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Yep. Mr. Shannon. Uh, Mr. Kipko, what did you say the potholes were going to be completed from the trucks or the gouges? Um, once the pool is done, hopefully by Friday, I can get the crews together and uh, get, so we're hopefully we got those within the next couple of weeks. I have some concerned citizens wondering. So. Yes, and that includes like Washington. I think it's one on Scott Street where the rut comes up by a Jeep. Mm -hmm. um, I think just down from you, uh, that's included. We have eight or nine main brake holes. So yeah, we do we do have a lot. <clears throat> awesome, thank you. Yeah, Mr. Lindsay. One more question on your potholes. Sure. I have to get all that done. When are you gonna start doing the uh, other streets? Which one? Other streets for what? For potholes. What other streets for potholes? Well, Handy's got a bunch of them, I know, and some of the other streets I've been on has got a few. I, I will have go, the names, but I can get them for you. I know they're supposed to take the regular truck out and go uh, do a second round, so let me get with um, the superintendent and find out. Okay. I haven't personally inspected you know, each and every street, but I will find out. I can take my camera and get some photos for you. Well, they're going to go out anyway, so they'll document all the addresses that we got to okay. hit them. Hey, right, thank you. Yep. Mr. Cook. Mr. Kitko, where do we stand with the Smith Park and the drive out here as far as the parking lot, the re redoing it? I did get an estimate some time ago from a contractor to do it, but that was a full widening with all the operations like the council meeting still being here. But um, it was, a, I don't remember the cost, but now it's, I think since things, some things are shifting, I'm going to probably back that down and I'm going to go get another estimate to resurface this. It's on the table, but um, I kind of left that to go to pull and holes and stuff. And then, but it is still there to do some work for asphalt here. One of the things we need to discuss is when we were having a discussion and work sessions, we had no indication we were going to be moving into a new city. And we had no indication that our council chambers would be moving. So we decided amongst the council and the administration, we're going to widen that road a little bit because of the traffic with council and all that stuff. Now that council's not going to be here, I think Mr. Woody's trying to say is he's not, we, do we need to widen it or can we just black top it and black top the driveway opposed to widen? If we don't widen, it's going to reduce cost. What's your guys' thoughts on that? Mr. Lowry. Because a wider road just means they're going to, they're going to drive a little faster. Right. I just, one thing I was concerned about was is getting some marked uh, handicap spaces out, out front, which was, I think, the most important. Sure. That is included in the estimate that I got. Okay. Was parking, designated parking to help clean it up. Okay. But we all also discussed, like I said, widening, <coughs> widening of the lanes. I would counsel Phil about if we just kept the same width, paved it, put striped parking in the front with some handicap, and called it in. I'm fine with that, Council, right. Mr. Chamey. I don't have a line. problem with that. If we can save money, uh, sure. just leave it the way it is and just get it reserved. Just make it nice and smooth, Mr. Lindsay. And that would possibly save what twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars by not widening it. You think, Mr. Pico? Uh, yeah, I mean it very well could be because their widening was excavation and everything. Yeah, yeah. and it, none of that's cheap. Mm -hmm. I, I think what we have out there, you know, fill it in with some gravel or whatnot. And some packing material, and then just blacktop it would be fine. So no widening. No widening, Mr. Cook. You save that money. I think we ought to look at uh, the usage, the parking during those times of usage. I know I have seen innumerable times that both sides of this have been parked full. I, I am concerned that. In the event that we would have some type of a medical emergency out here, uh, a fire, whatever, would be the possibility of getting the equipment back in through here with people parking on both sides. That was one of my main concerns. I did. I was able to find the, the estimate. The base basically doing what's out there, resurfacing it, uh, is about 28000 and then to add excavation, widen, and uh, striping was like 500 bucks, so it's really not much. 
but to excavate and widen was another twenty-four thousand dollars. Wow. So it'd have been fifty some, almost sixty thousand dollars to do a full rehab of everything, but about probably just under thirty thousand to do what's there now and add some uh, striping. I think we allocated fifty thousand dollars for that project. Am I correct? I didn't hear you. Fifty thousand to do that. I think you mean what we budgeted for. Yeah, I yeah. think it was in the neighborhood. You budgeted fifty thousand dollars for shelter house renovations, so that includes everything in here and outside. Okay. Are you good, Mr. Cook? I'm done. All right, Mr. Cobb. Mr. Cook, have you come up with any kind of a uh, on your equipment? A survey on your equipment yet it has to be replaced what's going down what's not i did get some prices from state bid but i'm still awaiting quotes back um, for the outfitting of those vehicles are you good all right any other questions for mr kick uh, no thank you can i get a motion on the table for you guys to decide if you want us to widen or keep as is so we can have a clear direction from council okay. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. I'll make a motion for the city to move forward when available to put the manpower into it to resurface the lot. What do you? No, I don't need that. Widen it or not. We're going to widen it or not. Right, that's what I'm resurface at the, the, at the regular design. Oh, God, I didn't hear that. Okay. Is there a second? Uh, I'll second. Mr. Shammy. Shammy. Count. Any so as is, as, as is layout, is. design, whatever you want to call it. No wide. No widening. No discussion, Mrs. Burner. You were the second, correct? Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. No, okay, I, I'm just making sure you're all right. <laughs> you gotta hold something up yeah, when you're thinking, at least like, I'm thinking sign. Thinking <laughs> sign. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna go regular, like it is. Yeah, just smooth it out. And we're looking to walk right around 24. It was 28 to keep 28. it the same size, the tub white to uh, make it uh, pave it, and then put some striping out there. Yes. Mr. Cook. No. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted, five to one. Fantastic. Any other comments for the service director? Yep. Mr. Bridge, back to you. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, moving on with the city manager report, our fire report with our fire chief, Chief Presti. Mayor, council, citizens. In the month of April, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 82 EMS calls in the city, 7 EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to eight fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. Uh, as of right now, our run stat is at 442 calls for the year. We had two EMS calls answered by, by mutual aid, either by Pike or Bethel Clark, due to 52 being on response. We answered two mutual aid EMS calls for Pike Township and two for Bethel Clark. In the month of April, the division responded to one overdose call. As of April 18th, the fire EMS division went entirely marks to the marks radio system for radio communications and station and pager alerting. We are totally off of the VHF system now. We are totally marked completely for everything, uh, communications-wise with dispatch, with other departments, and with our alerting in the station. Uh, thanks to the county approving and giving us the radios that they did and us swapping to the new, from the city of Springfield to the county for dispatching services, we were able to save a lot of money. Uh, we got over $96,000 free radio equipment, so that helped a lot. Uh, also, found out just this past week that the, the division received a grant from the first responder communications grant where we'll receive three iPads for the department free with it's a, a full free grant, no matching funds. Uh, the three iPads will be put onto the medics. They're used for reporting when we do our uh, patient reports. And this will allow the medics to take the, the iPads right into the homes or wherever the patient's at and live time put everything down that they need to do uh, for the patient's care, their medications, everything. Uh, we're trying to secure two more iPads, one to put on the uh, battalion vehicle and one to go into the station because 
with us switching this past year to the emergency reporting system, everything that we do in the department now is going to be almost completely paperless, even down to our truck checks in the morning. They're done through the uh, computer. Actually, some of the firefighters actually do it by their, using their iPhones. They can go in and do the truck checks and it's recorded and automatically goes into the system. And if there's any maintenance problems, it automatically shoots a uh, maintenance request to the maintenance officer for, uh, for the department for any problems. So moving a little bit into the future. Other yeah. than that, any questions? Any questions for the chief? Thank you, Chief Trustee. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, uh, Chief Trustee. Moving on to the city manager report. Uh, our, our police report, um, uh, Sergeant Underwood uh, had some, uh, is, could not make it, so thank you, Deputy Allender, for stepping into this place. You're welcome. Um, but we do not have a report, so as soon as that is uh, given to me, I will gladly email it out to the rest of the council members, and I do apologize. Okay. Uh, moving on under informational items. Uh, new building updates. I, we have a meeting on Thursday, May 23rd, and we are going to get to see the first uh, review of the design. Uh, for the building. So we are all very excited to see this. Um, uh, some updates on from the last time I spoke about the new building. Uh, I do need to take ceiling tile down. I did. I did have to, but then I was told I didn't have to, but now I have to again. So I will be doing that. Uh, but we are excited to see where we are with the review. And then again, it is only a first draft. Uh, good all lumber. I have discussion underneath here. And I am very happy to say about what I'm getting ready to say. We had a planning board meeting on May 16th. Uh, Troy Lumber will be moving its corporate headquarters to New Carlisle. They have to uh, uh, move locations. They sold their current location in Troy to Kettering Health Network so they can build a nice new facility. And they chose New Carlisle to call home. And what they will be doing is partnering with Goodall, um, keeping the existing Goodall site, but across the street on Davis Street, they are building a 6,800 square foot open air lumber storage yard. So we are very happy to get that. Um, and I, we will be uh, announcing some bigger plans in that area here in the, in the coming weeks that we've been working on in the, back, in the back side of things for the past about six months now. So that whole area is gonna have a completely different look, hopefully within the next year. And when we are able to uh, speak on the new project coming up, I will be gladly happy to report that to everyone. But in the meantime, Troy Lumber will be calling New Carlisle home. Um, moving on to come some middle, middle school career exploration day. Uh, a few of us attended that. I don't know if I had this on the last meeting, but it, it was on 5, 8, of 19 and uh, experienced our first school lockdown. And uh, we don't want to go through that again because uh, it was very nervous and uh, the adults were more nervous than the kids. So definitely do not want to experience that again, but it was a great event for the kids to uh, see what careers in Clark County and beyond are out there for them. Upcoming legislation. Um, employee new hire policy and cemetery plot pie, uh, buybacks. Those will be coming to council here in the next few meetings or so. Uh, Memorial Day walk. Um, I would like everyone to know that we did change the location of where we will meet this year. We are not meeting at Howard's IGA any longer. This year we will meet at the Church of the Brethren in downtown and that's going to reduce that walk. We still meet at 11.30 a.m. Uh, and the ce uh, ceremony will begin at noon at the um, cemetery. So please, if you want to take a vent, show up at the Church of the Brethren this year, not at Howard's IGA. There is an oath of office attached with the anticipation that we would be swearing in a new uh, council uh, person tonight, but I do not think that will be uh, going down due to lack of certification from the Board of Elections. And also attached is the Park and Recreation Bylaws. At the last meeting, we had some uh, discussion about the Parks and Rec Bylaws. Excuse me, I did go ahead and attach those in this packet. Council members, please review them again, re-familiarize yourself, because there will be, excuse me, a resolution to approve or deny, deny those at the next meeting in June, which is June 3rd. That is all I have for the city manager report, and I would be happy to entertain any questions. Council, comments or questions for the city manager? Hearing none. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. Fantastic. Moving on is communications, sorry, comments from members of the public. Please limit comments to five minutes or less and state your name and your address. Hearing none. Committee, oh, yes, go ahead. Peggy Eggleston, 312 South Main Street. Um, a couple of nights ago, I had someone who decided they wanted to come through and almost came into my living room. And I live right on the curve. 
And having lived there for the better part of 54 years, I know that people come, coming into town believe that speed limit drops to 25 closer to Jefferson than at Domino's. And I was wondering, since this has happened to me twice in less than six months, is there any possible way to maybe get police presence sitting at Hensley Park just to get people to slow down? Mr. Bridge, you taking a note? Um, I will. I don't think I can definitely talk with the police administrator on that. I don't think there would be any problem with placing a car down there for do we, purposes. Do we have the? Uh, did we get from the sheriff's office the uh, radar sign? I know we had put those on some side streets in the past that you know flash and tell them that they're going too fast. You've got we've got the one coming into town at thir where it's 35. Five, yeah. But it's getting them to drop down to 25. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, put it somewhere like front end. Ninety percent of the people that come by my house are going 35 to 45 miles an hour, yeah. and it's a 25 zone. And like I said, that's twice in less than six months that I've almost had a car in my living room. And I don't know how they managed to get between the telephone pole and the tree without hitting one or the other. But it's that or I'm going to put a concrete wall up around my house. Thank you. Mr. Graham. Dale Graham, 114 South Main Street. If I may comment on something Mr. Bridge said, um, the Board of Elections met this morning and certified uh, the election. Yeah, they also have to wait until the, um, if the other opponent wants to do a recount, they have X amount of days to honor to request that recount. So they can't issue the official certification until after that period of the recount, of the, uh, recount option is over. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Moving on. Resolutions none tonight. Ordinances. We have two intro. Mrs. Burner. All right. We have ordinance 19-09E, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. And ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into any and all agreements with the Board of Clark County Commissioners for the 2019 roadway resurfacing contract and declaring an emergency. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Make a motion to adopt Ordinance 19-09E. Second. Mr. Cobb. Who was the second? Cobb. Mr. <coughs> Lowry was the first. Yes. An explanation of this ordinance. Um, this is an emergency ordinance um, due to the necessity of, of having it to be effective. But this is the, uh, the legislation that allows us to go in to get the uh, work done for Hemlock, Butternut, and Bittersweet. Uh, any in-depth questions of council or the public should have one, I will divert those to our service director, Mr. Kitko. Council, any questions? Hearing none, Mrs. Burner. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Motion accepted 6-0. Moving on to Ordinance 19-10, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on June 3rd, 2019, and Ordinance Amending and Repealing Ordinance 17-14. Other business, Mrs. Burr? Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the City Building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2.00. Crime Watch will be Wednesday, June 12th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. The flag burning ceremony will take place on Friday, June 14th at the American Legion. Um, more information to come. The 2019 Memorial Day Walk will take place Saturday, May 25th, 2019. The walk will begin at 11.30 from the Church of the Brethren and the ceremony at the cemetery begins at noon. The 2019 Community Garage Sale will be held on June 22nd and June 23rd. A big boom thank you to is June 29th. The rain out date will be June 30th. Um, more information to come. And um, the last part and is there swearing in that we won't yep. do until next time. Council, any other business? Mr. Here. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. I move we uh, adjourn you to go into executive session Second. for discussion of Litigation. May I take back five minutes of your time? Sir? May I take back five minutes of your time? Motion on the floor, sir. I'm going to go take it anyways. 
Uh, so everyone knows that we had our election. It's uh, been a, it was a very spirited one and it was close within seven votes, I believe, I think is what the final count was. Uh, I've talked to Mr. Bridge about this about three weeks ago and some members of council. Uh, a lot of life changes going on for me. It's been really appreciative serving here. I love this town. It's home for me, uh, but I gotta move on. Uh, I know that it's been a long slog here, seven and a half years. I've really enjoyed it. I came on with Randy, actually. So, started about the same time and with Mike, so. But it is unfortunate, but life does change and changes pretty radically. Uh, but I am looking forward to uh, the fall, and I think it's gonna be exciting times. But uh, I wish you all the best of luck. I will be resigning. My official date will be May 31st, and I hope everyone has a wonderful and safe Memorial Day. Now, Mr. Br Mr. Sorry, Lindsay, we can go back to your motion. We have a motion on the floor in a second. All right. Any discussion on the motion? Hmm. Hearing none. Ms. Burner. Was Mr. Lowry the second? Who was the second? Shammy. Shammy. I'm like, okay. Shammy was I the second? I missed that one. Okay. Oh, Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Mr. Cobb. Oh. You scared me when you don't talk fast, man. Huh? Said so you scared me when you don't talk fast. Mr. Cook. Yes. Two years. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. All right, we are in executive session. Yeah. Thank you.